All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are with Andreas. Yeah. Not not Andrea. <laughs> earlier it's a girl name. Yeah. Earlier, uh, I was calling him Andrea by accident. Andreas is from uh, Sweden, Stockholm, right? Yeah. And he's a very special guest. He is uh, a community member of Old School Magic, and he's the uh, founder of the Old School Magic for Life group on Facebook. And uh, he is very passionate about old school, right? Yeah, that's Extremely. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're doing this video because we want to do a couple of cool things and talk about how did you get started with old school? Like, why do you love it so much? Well, actually, the biggest reason that I love it is that um, when you become older, it's hard to get, get this passion for something. You get really excited about something because you lived your life. But when I was small, between 13 and 18, I played a lot of magic and uh, when I started to play it in the early 30s, it gave me the same vibe as when I was 13, so 17, 17 years earlier. So what happens actually that rather than I buy a nice car or maybe invest in some stocks or something, or some nice, like a Mona Lisa, some nice art, I'd rather buy like art that you could both enjoy. Like the Savannah Lines. Yeah. You can both watch at them because they're beautiful, but the most passionate thing is the feeling when you play them. And you share this feeling with people all over the world, and all of them have the same passion, and it's like an... Yeah, it's it's hard to describe, but when passions meet, um, it uh, makes emotions, and emotions you cannot pay for money or anything. So it's more than just art. It's also the feeling, and it's the... Yeah, it's a lot of love. No, no, I, I, no, I think everybody, guys, can you feel that passion and love for old school? Because I'm telling you, uh, Andreas has this deep love for old school. Yeah, it's incredible. incredible. All right, so one of the loves he has, he showed it. It was the Savannah Lions. Uh, let's put it down here. Tell me, tell the fans, what, why do you love this card so much? Well, actually, I played a lot of old school um, some years ago, and it was okay in tournaments and. I always loved white weenie and I put together a deck with green, white and, and blue and I have never played so never went so good in tournaments and after playing this deck I won actually the shark. Uh, and nobody played exactly this deck. And the shark, and it's not so so it's not common in old school that people come up with quite new styles of deck. And Savannah Lion was one of the reasons that I won it and the only thing that's special with this tournament I won is that I won a shark. And a shark is not the average card. I don't have the shark with me, but I will send it uh, yeah. to later. And when I own a shark, I'm forever in my life welcome to play in the World Championship of Old School called NewCon in Gothenburg, Sweden. Hundreds of people all over the world is gathering. It's very hard to get in this uh, tournament, but because I won this tournament with my... This, I was forced to dedicate myself, right. or, or motivated to dedicate myself to the old school more. So actually that was happened. So this this giant shark, guys, is uh, the dark, look it up, giant shark, and yeah. it is a prize that is the ultimate prize uh, to win Noobcom. Noobcom is the old cha world uh, championship of old school in Stockholm, Stockholm? Gothenburg, Sweden, and it's held annually around April and Easter. And uh, Andreas basically want to invite. Yeah, but I was explaining for life. It. Yeah, it's like this. Uh, there is only one or two shark tournaments before Nukom every year, and they are held in Sweden. And if you win them, you win the shark. And then when you won it, you are welcome to all the future Nukoms. See? Right, right, no, no, yeah, of course, ah, that makes perfect sense. Ah, okay. So this shark I guys won't Nukom at all. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Count of eight, but they it's, didn't win. It's like a pro tour entry forever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. And this this card, Savannah Lions, won you the tournament. Definitely. And, 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 and I think I saw this deck, uh, guys. I, I, if you go to uh, the the old school Magic blog on the Swedish yeah. Magic site, what year was this? So they can look up the deck. Uh, it was uh, was the last uh, Noobcon actually. Last Noobcon. Oh, well, last Noobcon last year. Seventeen. Noobcon yeah. number uh, nine, yeah. and uh, it was a side event tournament, yeah. right? Yeah. To win the the shark. And this deck had uh, everything, right? Yeah, had... it was uh, back then. It was uh, green, uh, white, blue, and it was the fastest creature available on the market. It's so, Ernum the Jin, Savannah yeah. Lion, uh, Serendips, and Source Explosion, Disenchants, and Sarah Angel. 
no surrender. No, no, a little bit of surrender. So also. super fast yeah. creatures, uh, counter spells, yeah. just a uh, chance. No, 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 it doesn't chance, yes, but no counter spells. But uh, an interesting thing, what happened was actually that I went top 8 in the, the World Championships, but uh, I also went top 8 in all other tournaments I ever played since that. And I won uh, 3 tournaments with this style of deck, so I got like, the feeling of winning is nice, even if it's a casual game. So this, this deck beat out the deck? Yeah, I killed the deck. Wow! wow. I, I also... Wait, wait, you killed the deck? Yeah, a lot of times. Anything you want to say to Brian Weissman? <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 say no. Yeah. Brian's gonna watch this, so <laughs> you no, know, no, talk, you know, because the yeah. deck is the deck. Yeah, it's the deck, but the, the deck um, had a hard time like managing Savannah Lions turn one because they only have four sorts of blow shots. So yeah. Savannah Lions turn, turn one. one. Yeah, and it's, if you can follow up with something turn two, it's very hard for them to like. They, they're great, but not turn one, two, three, four, five. Then they're great. Four Mistress Factory. Of course. Yeah. So uh, so what's going oh, okay. on? Yeah. So so. Brian Weissman, you're listening to this. Basically, what Andreas figured out is, you know, and I think uh, uh, Brian, Brian and I talked about White Weenie. White Weenie is very powerful. But the difference here is that he's playing big creatures, me medium-sized Serendib. As much as I can yeah, get for the yeah, Monaco. Right. And so, uh, Brian, Brian plays the Moat, but Moat can't deal with those flying creatures. And look, round one. Round one. Now, now, sideboard, it gets interesting. What do you do for sideboard against uh, the deck? I, I can tell you. Well, my speciality against the deck is first of all I have the. I think I play one or two um, uh, Sylvan Library. I play uh, four Dishant and two. Uh, I think Dust to Dust. It destroys two this, uh, artifacts. And I don't uh, sideboard out my Swords of Plosia so much because the thing that's happened with the deck in the beginning, if they don't draw any Swords and I have a Summon Alliance, they have to block with their Mistress. And I sword it and they lose a land. And Disenchant, of course. So the, 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 they have to. And then when the Surrender comes, they, they waste the Swords of Plosia. So I slice them as a uh, buttering sun, most of them. So you, so you keep the Swords, you put four Disenchants. Yeah, and then, then the. the yeah, the, the kill two artifacts, yeah. Uh, so what you're doing here is you keep the creatures. Yeah, of course. So the key here is you, you're expecting the Abyss sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, of course. So when the Abyss comes, how does that work? Disenchant? Oh, that, that's a hard one. Uh, I, I lost the, yeah. the Abyss is worse than the moat. Since so I Abyss is... Uh, okay. Yeah, so awesome. really Abyss, and then you have the Mistress Factory as a condition. Yeah, no yeah, Fireball, yeah. nothing else. I, of course, I have the Sea Blast, and they were powerful. Four? Not two. Two, one or two, depending. No fork, nothing else? No, no, no. Okay, no. so what he's doing here is a very, uh, there is a weakness. Every deck has a weakness. Of course. So of your course. weakness is the Abyss. Definitely. And and anything else that yeah, can be... Yeah, re very, very hard. I, I, I totally died for the new Atom deck with uh, Mono Red, Atom deck. And a, uh, you know the, the new one when they unrestricted yes. device that I totally killed when David Chambers playing in the finals? Also, another thing I totally die most is Black Knight. I can't sort it. Yes. The only way to remove it is actually <laughs> Sea Blast now too. So when they play Black, it is big Black Knight. Black Knight's very hard. Wow. Yeah. And actually, the, the deck become a little bit famous because I, I, I killed um, the world champion, uh, Martin Berlin, because he, he played like... Uh, I, I cybered out, out all my Serendips against, against his two deck, so I didn't have so many Arabian Knights cards. And he had a lot of uh, red elemental blasts, not so many blue cards. And then I put in the Meek Stone and Cyberdeen for Sarrow Angels. Oh. So when he had the hero, he had Erna for his work and play uh, attacked with both. Then I put Meek Stone and then Sarrow Angel. He ticks one every day, every time, and then uh, I get Forest War. Because all the good creatures, they actually give you damage. So if you use Meek Stone, it's very under unavailable card. So that was also a take. So your happened. cyborg is uh, two Meek Stone? Uh, one or two. I don't one or two, know. four Sarah, Sarah Angel. Uh, no, no, I have that three in the, in the starting and one extra inside. I'll, I'll put in. This is what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to look for the deck list is on the old school magic blog. Yeah. Right? Okay, okay, so I'm going to uh, look for that link. I'll put it below. All right, Andres, let's talk about uh, your passion for old school is obviously very clear. Uh, <laughs> we well, talked, you talked about your, when you pat, you're getting older and all that. This is true. Yeah. As you get older, your cards become. You, there's so many new cards, but you you have so many great memories of the old cards. Do you think, as Magic gets older, as a prediction, do you think people, the newer players, will come to old school eventually because they see these old cards? Or do you think 
they will go to the new cards and remember those new cards and play with those. That's an interesting question. Well, it depends how much contact they have with the old cards. You know, when we are playing, people that never seen a Lotus come by and like, oh shit, the Black Lotus. So they haven't seen it, but they want to play it. But of course, I think it will always be a little bit stronger if you have the, the, the memory of playing the card when you were small. So I think actually it's up to the future generation and how we treat our kids. If we will introduce our kids to the old school, of course there will be the generation of our generation. It will be. And uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the future will sell, tell, but I think so. That is big. You're, you're, you're hitting a very uh, key component is Wizards of the Coast, one of the things that they're not doing is they're, they're not introducing the kids and they're not building that relationship long term. They're not, because at the shops, they sell the cards, but they're not working with the Wizards, is not working with the, uh, the shops to bring in the kids, bring, you know, introduce the game. Do you think that might be a bad thing for the game? If, if you don't bring the kids in to no. play, Magic might no. not build throughout the years, I right? I thought that way, but that's an interesting point. But yeah. something I have thought about is that, actually, when I was starting, uh, a mox cost uh, 50 bucks or something, and I got 50 bucks uh, when I was 15 every month. And now the boxes is like, I don't know, 1,000 or 2,000, and that's maybe uh, what you get in salary. So the, the, the price hasn't actually, what you if you compare your income back then to now, we have a steady flow. But the problem is, you know, in 10 years, maybe it's been harder for them to get the cards. Yes. A big difference. So, so yeah. getting the cards for old school financially will be difficult. Yeah, that's um, cool. How do you feel about that? Do you think, uh, that, do you think that's proxying cards? are a fair way for people to play? What, what do you I think? Should, well, this is hard. I must be honest. Yeah, yeah. I am not like all the, uh, many other in the you know, Swedish Scandinavian community. I want this to be a big thing because I think that the vibe in the old school, every Magic player should be feeling because if you go to a GP, there's very, very competitive. But I would like to, more people to get this casual vibe where you can play with other ones. So I'm very f pro to like Open the like collector's edition, international. Maybe collectors, but at least revised or something. So, so we can get like new players because, you know, what with all the gold cards, if, if all the opponents are dead and have, you know. You're exactly right because revised has a lot of uh, old school cards that you can still affordably buy. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. So that's just my idea that having you know play whenever you want. I am forced to be legacy because I can't play so much old school as I want. I know some people think that's nice to play a little, but for those who have this urge, well, there's not enough. Right. All right, so a couple more questions. If someone was starting out with old school, what are some of the advice you would give them? Oh, uh, the first advice, I would say that play something that is not so expensive, mono, and the, the mono color that you love the most when you were small as a kid. Mono black? Mono black, mono, mono red, white, mono white, green, whatever. You don't need to, you can pay, you know, you don't need to go all in from the beginning and try if you really like the community because that's who you want to play. You like them or not. If you like them, you can develop your deck later so you don't spend a lot of money. That's the first advice. And then try to come to some big tournament and to some my small tournament so you, you feel the vibe because that's what you're going to get. Yeah, you can. I think that's good, and also they have the Skype group, guys. I told you yeah. guys it'd been another video. There's the uh, Andreas and I actually played us on Skype before. Uh, I think I remember the, his deck, and he was playing this uh, a similar deck that he plays now, the white blue. We with, green back yeah, then. Yeah, back then, yeah, green little, yeah, and it, it, it was a very fun to play with them. And uh, I think that's really interesting because a lot of people don't understand that technology. I think technology eventually Skype will allow us to play more. Uh, do you think? I think later on the cameras, you, if you buy one of those external cameras, you can play Skype and you can play with anybody around the world. And the time zones help you with that. That's very good. Okay, very last question. Uh, do you have kids, by the way? Not yet. I'm no, working you, on it. You have a girlfriend and wife? Yeah, of course. Wife. Okay. So you, you talked about something uh, about passion in life. What will happen to old school when people get older? Like let's say the player is us. What happens to us with these cards? What do you think will happen? Will you think majority of us will sell them? Hold on. Will, the people, will people go off and sell them for retirement? Or do you think people will pass to their kids and family? What will happen to the amazing amount of history, amount of cards? What will happen? Well, Your prediction. My prediction is that um, if you love something, 
uh, that is your hobby and you love somebody that you have given birth to, my prediction is that you probably teach that kid this. That is what you love yourself. That's my what I guess in the future. And um, I think that when I'm 95, I will play you here. Yeah, I will that's. I sign you up because. Yep. This is what gives me, you know, the the the, the is a big part of my yeah. uh, passion. So why well, shouldn't I do it? And I, if I have, I'm 37 now. If I haven't get bored yet, why should I ever get bored? And this is a genius uh, so, game that haven't stopped. Before. That is that is awesome. I got a pen. I'll pen over. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, guys. So <laughs> let me just change this real quick. Okay, so Andreas and I, you know, had a great time. We actually played for Anti. Anti, the Anti was, uh, uh, we don't have the game uh, fully recorded because it was pathetic on my end. But we played uh, a match for a sandwich and a Coke for lunch. Uh, under 20 euros. And uh, we had a great time. But the point is, it doesn't matter because Andreas actually helped me tweak my deck. I played at not CopCon. Uh, it was a little bit uh, flooded in mana. But the fact is, we had a group of uh, old school players here in the UK. Uh, shout out to Rod Smith and the other people. And we were able to, as a community, kind of go over the deck tech and work together. That is the spirit of old school right there. Really? And yeah. how many countries was collected here? That's yeah. Also, well, Denmark, ton. Sweden. Amazing. CopCon. And, oh, yeah. and we'll have a little bit of video on it, but, you know, it's an exciting moment. Andreas, thanks again. Thanks so much. Yeah. 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 Hey, guys, seriously. Uh, I hope you guys understand that the reason why I do these videos and everything is because what he said is that when I'm 95, whatever, even 80, how long I live, I want to still be playing Savannah Lions, be playing the cards I like, because we love them. Yeah. And my kids, I'm going to still show my, you know, my kids, my, Nick, my, my son Nicholas, who's one now, uh, to play. Uh, I hope you guys do too. Thanks again for watching, guys. Take Thanks. care. Thank you. Enjoy. There he is. Don't ever sort, sort this card? What do you think? Yes, in the beginning? You must. You must. Yeah. That's it.